Okay, guys, so we're looking at section 3.5, part 2. Our goal is to be able to graph rational functions. Rational is fractional. When you see the word rational functions, that just means you have a numerator and a denominator to your original function. If you see a polynomial function, that means there's no fractions. It's not going to be a numerator and a denominator. So when we're trying to graph these types of functions, the first thing we always want to look for would be the asymptotes. So to find our vertical asymptotes, we have to look at the denominator and see what's going to make that denominator equal zero. So we just take that denominator, we set it equal to zero. Kyler, what are going to be the vertical asymptotes? Right. So that's an important thing to know, and that will always go in our chart. Something else we want to look for are the intercepts. To find the intercepts, we're just going to substitute in 0 for x. If we substitute in 0 for x, James, what are we going to get? Plug in 0 for x into the original function. We get 0 on the top over. Yeah, so 0, 0 is going to be our only intercept. So we know that that's going to be a point on our graph. I'm just going to go ahead and put that point on my graph. All right, so we've already given you the first and second derivatives. No longer are we really checking you on whether you can find derivatives. We want you to be able to apply it. All right, so we've done this. So next thing we want to find are the extrema. To find the extrema, we have to look for our critical numbers first. Can somebody describe how we find critical numbers? Set the what equal to zero? First derivative. So we would take this first derivative, and I would set it equal to zero. So we would then cross multiply. Or basically, we're just looking at what is it that's going to make the numerator equal zero? What is it, guys? <coughs> zero, right? So our critical number is going to be at x equals zero. Critical numbers also occur at whatever x value makes the denominator equal zero. But what do we already know about what's making the denominator equal zero? The vertical asymptotes. So if they're vertical asymptotes, they cannot be critical numbers. It's impossible that it can be a max or a min if it's already a vertical asymptote. Okay. So we've got that taken care of. For concavity, for concavity, we're looking at our second derivative and what's going to make it equal zero. That's going to tell us our possible points of inflection. So I look at this one, and we say, what's going to make this numerator equal 0? Is there any way that x squared plus 3 can be 0? No. Because if I solve that, I would get x squared equals negative 3. There's no number that I can square to get a negative. So I do not have any possible points of inflection. So we've looked at that. The last thing we want to do are the limits as x approaches infinity. So I'm going to do the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm going to substitute into this. I would get infinity over infinity. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's. Derivative of the top over derivative of the bottom. I get this. What am I allowed to do at this point? Cancel once I get it to monomials. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I know that as this x value goes down to infinity, the y value we're approaching is 1. Now I'm going to find the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Substitute in. Infinity over infinity. Use L'Hopital's. Okay, I can now cancel. What do we get? 1. So there are the limits as x goes to positive and negative infinity. That's the same thing as the horizontal asymptote. These limits, as x goes to infinity and negative infinity, that's telling me the asymptote. I know I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to set up the chart. I have to go from negative infinity to a vertical asymptote. Put in the vertical asymptote. From the vertical asymptote to the critical number, put in the critical number. Critical number to vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. And vertical asymptote to infinity. So what's the pattern here? I had one, two, three values that had to go into this chart. How many rows did we end up using? Seven, right? So what would be the pattern there? We have three values in the chart. What can we do to those numbers to get how many rows we're actually going to need? Multiply by two and add one is right. That's how many rows you're always going to have. This, three times two plus one. All right, so now we would choose some number in this region and we would substitute it not into here, but into our first derivative. If I plug negative four into the first derivative, I'm going to have a negative times a negative, that's a positive. Anything squared is positive, that's positive. I'm going to plug negative four into my second derivative. Um, negative 4 squared, that's positive. That's going to be positive on the bottom, positive on the top. So what that tells me is that I would have to be increasing and concave up. The first derivative tells us slope. The second derivative tells us concavity. If I plug negative 3, see these just get plugged into f of x. The intervals get plugged in here and here. If I plug negative 3 back into the original, I'm going to get something that's undefined. We don't plug in here on the numbers. What do we already know about this? What do we know happened at negative 3? It was a what? Vertical asymptote. Okay, choose a number in this region. What's the number in this region? Negative 1. So I'm not going to plug into the original. I'm going to plug in here. So negative 1 times a negative is a positive. This bottom is always going to be positive, so that's positive. Plugging negative 1 in here, um, that's positive. Negative 1 minus 9, that's going to be negative, isn't it? So you've got to be careful with this. I'm doing it kind of quickly. You'll want to go a little slower just to make sure you've got that right. Okay, now 0 is a number. I plug it into the original. That gives me 0. I don't plug in here and here. I'm going to come back to this in just a minute. 1 is in this interval, so I'm plugging it into my first derivative. I have a negative over a positive. That's negative. 1 into here. That's positive. 1 squared is 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Cubit, it's negative. So that's going to be decreasing and concave down. Now I go back up to this. Remember how this was a critical number. Critical number right here. It's either a max or a min. Look at this, what's happening. We're going from increasing to decreasing. Natalie, what does that mean if we're going from increasing to decreasing? What do we have to have where it changes? A max or a min? Max. So this is going to have to be a max at 0, 0. Okay, 3. We know that was undefined. We already know what 3 is. Don't waste your time doing much with it. We know it's a vertical asymptote. Then our last region, we're going to plug in 4 back into the original. That's going to be negative over a positive is negative. Plugging 4 in here, that's a positive. That's a positive. That's going to be positive. And so this is going to be decreasing and concave up. So now we're going to put all that together to graph. So I'm going to come up here, put in those vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to look at my first region from negative infinity to negative 3. We had to be increasing and concave up. How is that going to look? A or B? 
A. Then I look at my next region from x being negative 3 to infinity, I'm sorry, to 0. I had to be increasing and concave down. So if I'm increasing and concave down, that looks like that. My next region, I had to be decreasing and concave down. That's going to look like this. I had a vertical asymptote and then decreasing and concave up. That's the way the function would have to look. Of course, you could do all this on your graphing calculator, and you could check it. And that's the reason you won't be able to use your graphing calculator on the quiz, because we're seeing if you can graph. You can use a non-graphing calculator. Okay, so just putting this in to check. And we can see that it's correct. All right, so on your homework, if you get stuck on something on a worksheet, you can just, you know, put it into your calculator, look at it, and then you can probably even figure out how the chart should have looked based on what your answer is. All right, guys, we're going to do one more here on our own. So we've got our original function. Um, asymptotes, that's the first thing we're going to look at. Do we have a vertical asymptote? Is there anything that would make this undefined? Uh-huh. Zero. Zero. So I like to kind of graph as I go. So I've got x equals zero. That's going to be the vertical asymptote. All right, then we're going to find intercepts. I can't plug in zero for x. It's going to be undefined. Um, if I want to find the other intercept, I plug in 0 for y, if I cross multiply, that's not going to work either, is it? Can you see how as soon as I get x squared equal to a negative, I know that I don't have any intercepts. So there's no intercepts. Okay, to find my possible extrema, my critical numbers, I'm going to take the first derivative. So I'm going to think of this as negative 2 minus 5x to the negative 2. So this derivative is 0. Negative 5 times negative 2 is going to be 10x to the negative 3. So what this would tell me then is I have a critical number at whatever makes this equal 0 and whatever makes this undefined, which would be 0. But why is 0 not a critical number? It's a vertical asymptote, so it can't be. So we have no critical numbers. The next thing I look for is concavity. So now I have to take the second derivative. So this derivative is going to be 10 times negative 3 is negative 30, x to the negative 4. Possible points of inflection are whatever makes this equal 0 and whatever makes it undefined. That would be 0 again, wouldn't it? So there's no possible points of inflection. So our chart's going to be pretty easy. All we have is a vertical asymptote. How many columns am I going to need then? Three. We take the number we have and we double it and add 1. So I have to go from negative infinity to 0, 0, and 0 to infinity. We put our f of x, our f prime of x, our f double prime of x, and the meaning. See, this is a way to do everything in one, one chart, okay? 
So instead of having to do the first derivative test, the second derivative test separately, we can do it all at the same time. That was our goal with this. So we're going to plug negative 1 not into the original, just into the first derivative. What is it, positive or negative? Everyone, plug negative 1 into the first derivative. It is negative. What does that mean then? Decreasing. Plug negative 1 into our second derivative. What is it? Which is it? Negative. So what's that going to mean then? Concave down. 0 gets plugged only into the original. See, numbers go back just into the original, and it's undefined. What does it mean if it's undefined? It's a vertical asymptote. Okay, don't need to do this now. So we plug 1 into our first derivative, that's a positive. 1 into our second derivative, that's a negative. So what's happening there? Increasing and concave down. All right, so now I want you guys to try to graph it. Without using your calculator, do a graph. Oh, that's something I forgot to do. Thank you. So to find the horizontal asymptote, I can find that limit as x goes to infinity and that limit as x goes to negative infinity. So if we do that, we're going to plug in infinity. What's any number divided by infinity? Zero. And so we're going to have negative 2 minus 0. So when I do this then, I know that I'm going to get negative 2. Same thing when I plug in the negative infinity. I have negative 2 minus 5 over negative infinity squared. That's negative 2. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2. Everybody get it? Looks like this. You had to be decreasing concave down, increasing concave down. That's the way that's going to look. Plus, guys, think about it. What's another reason I know it couldn't go like this? There are no what? X-intercepts. So if there were no X-intercepts, no intercepts at all, I know it couldn't go up like this. So there's lots of reasons for it to look this way. Do you have any questions? All right, so our goal on this is to be able to make one chart and be able to come up with a meaning and graph. And on your next quiz, sometimes I'll just give you this chart and ask you to fill in what's the meaning, okay? But even without having the function. But that's not hard to do once you've done this. Yeah, Jake? Um, let me look at the sheet here. It is actually on the 28th. So, like a week.